Hello, I'm Tom Hathaway. I'm wearing my BA hat to symbolize that anyone in an organization might do business analysis, whether or not they have the job title, business analyst. So let's talk business analysis. This knowledge nugget explains why you should draw a data flow diagram, or DFD, what a fully balanced DFD looks like, and what value a DFD fragment provides. These simple techniques will help you when you are the one wearing the BA hat. From the perspective of the one wearing the BA hat, the act of creating a data flow diagram, or DFD, is an awakening. Drawing the diagram forces you to ask questions that you might otherwise overlook. It's also an awakening for members of the business community whose process you are depicting. The people in the trenches and those managing them quite often have never seen a picture of their process, and a picture activates parts of the human brain that words cannot. As a result, the phrase, I see, takes on a whole different meaning when you're presented with a picture of your process. For that reason, I recommend drawing a DFD just to get everyone involved on the same page. Once you have a DFD, exploding a process and balancing the data inputs and outputs between the levels often reveals missed data flows. After all, no one can think of everything at once. If the tool finds a single missed data flow, it's probably well worth the time it took to draw the diagram and apply the technique. The same is true of horizontal balancing to reveal missing data elements. If we asked IT to automate a process with a missing data flow or data elements, we would most likely end up with an application that does not meet the business needs. IT professionals are generally extremely good at their job, and they'll most likely recognize that they're missing something at some point in the development process. The problem is the timing of the discovery and the related cost when the omission is discovered. Adding a missing process late in the project is a relatively simple step, but missing data often affects a multitude of processes, making it one of the most expensive errors for IT projects. The simple act of identifying data elements and ensuring their completeness allows you to recognize and resolve these issues before you involve the developers. In my experience, that is one of the most powerful arguments for spending time to develop and analyze a data flow diagram. A completely balanced or leveled DFD starts at the top with a context diagram consisting of one or more processes that are in scope for your project and all external entities with which those processes exchange data. Each of those level 1 processes explodes to a level 2 data flow diagram depicting the detailed processes inside the level 1 process with all internal data flows and data stores. Each process on the level 2 diagram would either explode further to a level 3 DFD and from level 3 to level 4, etc., or be described in detailed process specifications, aka mini specs. Processes that do not explode to a lower level DFD are called functional primitives, and each data flow and data store in the functional primitives should explode to a list of the contained data elements with their relevant metadata. Although balancing a completely level DFD reveals data discrepancies and disconnects, it may not be necessary for your project. Many people only need a small fragment of a DFD to understand the inner workings of a specific process, in particular on projects following an agile approach to delivering technology the time required to create a completely leveled diagram is not justified if a developer only needs to know how the credit department establishes the credit limit for a new customer. In that case, a DFD fragment might suffice. The following is an example of a DFD fragment based on an exercise that we use in our instructor-led classes. To test your understanding of the concepts presented, you might want to take this opportunity to draw a DFD fragment using the project scope statement and the interview notes that follow before peeking at our solution.
Here's an example of the diagram that many of our students have produced for this scenario. In the future, a prospect will submit an application via our website. If the prospect doesn't have a policy with us, the site will request a credit check web service and either reject or approve the application directly. If the request is from one of our current customers in good standing or approved via the credit check, the site will provide a temporary proof of insurance certificate that the prospect can print out and use to register his or her vehicle. In any case, the request will then be forwarded to underwriting for normal processing, which will either lead to acceptance, the norm, modification, overriding a web rejection, or rejection, a bad risk. If the request is approved, a policy will be issued and sent to the customer via standard mail. Notice that this DFD shows a business process at some indeterminate level of detail. Some of the processes might be very high level, whereas others are very specific. If you need to understand how any of these processes work in detail, you could explode it to see its internal processes. To summarize, Creating a data flow diagram is an extremely revealing and rewarding step in the analysis of a business process. I have never used any other tool that is as effective at triggering animated discussion amongst the stakeholders about how a business process works and how it should work. Obviously, creating the diagram is just the first step. This diagram opens the door to a series of specific business analysis techniques that will help the business community recognize how their actions impact other downstream processes. You can also identify problem areas, timing anomalies, and error handling issues that can lead to missing requirements. It's important to note that the diagram is a snapshot in time. Once you present the business community with this versatile visual aid, they may immediately start to make changes. Because of the cumulative effect of those changes, you should never assume that the diagram you created a few years ago or even a few months ago is still valid. If you really need to understand the current business process, you are generally best served by starting at scratch as we demonstrated. The problem you face is, of course, the effort required to flush out all of the details presented by leveling and balancing. Is it really worth the time? In our experience, a data flow diagram as a tool that benefits the project by reducing the risk of potential project failure can be worth its weight in gold. It's also amazing to experience how the diagram awakens project memories months or years later when you revisit it. Thank you for viewing this knowledge nugget. Now that you know what the process of creating and using a data flow diagram adds to your project, make good use of this technique when you are the one wearing the BA hat.